Over the last couple of months, you will have been seeing this telescope featured a lot in my recent videos. It is the Asgard SQA85, a super quintuplet astrograph telescope, and it is stunning. But let's first address the elephant in the room, the cost. In my most recent video, what telescope should you buy in 2025, the most expensive pick on my list was this telescope currently priced at $2,395, which certainly puts it into the more premium budget category. But does the quality of the telescope justify its cost? Let's find out. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So first things first, let's learn about the specifications of this telescope. It's got an aperture of 85mm and a focal length a little over 400mm, making this a very fast telescope, which means there's no need for purchasing any additional expensive focal reducers and flatteners. It's a quintuplet Petzval refractor telescope that's very small in size, making it super easy to travel with. The telescope arrived package inside its very own soft foam carry case, which is unbelievably handy since if and when I travel with my telescope gear, I much prefer to take my telescope on board with me as carry-on. The telescope is full frame, which means it's compatible with 48, 54, and 68 mm camera adapters. So, so far, so good. The specifications of the telescope are very appealing. So let's get it set up and taking images of our night sky. Here's the equipment I chose to pair this telescope with. I decided to install a budget-friendly autofocuser that matched the color scheme of the SQA85. You can see how I did so in my other video. I then attached an ASI 2600MC duo camera and placed the telescope upon an AM5N mount that I'm currently being loaned, which all in all still makes the entirety of this setup very lightweight and portable. There are two dovetail mounting options on the scope for you to attach accessories such as your mini PC or finder scope, but since I'm using the ASI 2600MC duo, I don't actually need a finder scope. On the advertisements for the SQA85, it boasts about its superior star performance. Well, now let's see how good it really is. Here are some of the single unprocessed images I captured with this telescope from my back garden in England. So in order to really test the scope, my first target has been framed to include two different DSOs at opposite corners of the image. We're hoping for pinpoint stars and accurate colors across the board. To show you precisely what that doesn't look like, here's an aberration spotter image that showcases the corners and center part of an image that I took of the Andromeda Galaxy last year. As you can see, the stars towards the middle are fine, nice and round, but those in a corner are gradually more and more horrific. This is a single five minute long exposure image captured with a color camera, no filters used. In the top left hand corner, you can see the monkey head nebula, whilst towards the bottom right, you can see the star Propus and the jellyfish nebula, a supernova remnant also known as IC443. I like it, and as you can see from the corners of the image, the telescope does a really good job of providing you with sharp pinpoint stars. I carried on imaging this area and stacked 18 five minute long exposures to give me this one and a half hour stacked image. Next up, I decided to go for the beautiful Rosetta Nebula. At 408 mm focal length, the SQA85 boasts a relatively wide field of view, which I suppose you could argue for this image is a little too wide, but I prefer it, especially since we can see a rich variety of colorful stars surrounding this open star cluster. Once again, beautiful round stars throughout the image. Yeah, I don't really see star shapes being a problem at all with this telescope, but I will use the PixInsight aberration tool to analyze a single frame from each of today's targets, purely because it helps illustrate that it's not a fluke or a one-off or I've specifically chosen the best frame. This telescope is in fact delivering pinpoint stars every single time. I only took seven five minute long exposures to create this stacked image, but it's very nice. The colors that the SQA85 and the ASI 2600MC duo have managed to bring out together make this a gorgeous astro image. I love it when you get a high abundance of contrasting red and blue colors throughout your image. And then lastly, for the final image, I picked the most decorated deep sky field of view that I could find in the skies. And that included a Christmas tree, a star cluster, and a varying nebula. I bet you can't spot the last one. When testing out this telescope, I've been very keen to push targets to the edges of the image. I really want to test how uniform the views are with the scope. How nice will the colors translate when they are put right in the corners? Well, as you can see from this single five minute long exposure, very well indeed. Let's switch to the view of the stacked image. This is 24 times five minute long exposures. I've bumped up the colors a little bit, so now you can really see this variance across the image. On the right here, we have the Christmas tree nebula, but I'd argue that it's only real similarity to a Christmas tree is that there's a star on top and there are bright lights going around it. But here's the real question. Can you spot Hubble's variable nebula? It looks like a small white ghostly cape around a white star. Here's an image of it that I captured the other night with my eight inch Celestron SCT and a 0.7 times reducer.
So, have you found it yet? That's right, it's at the very top of your screen, or the bottom, if you live in Australia. Wait, what? So the first thing that we noted at the start of this review video was that this telescope was listed at a premium price of $2,395. But it's safe to say that it's lived up to its price tag as it is producing very premium images. The stars are pinpoint and round and the colors are especially vibrant. The scope is lightweight and portable enough that I will be taking it with me on my next trip and all I'll have to do is just pop it into its included carry case. But what if you're watching this and thinking, oh, that's amazing. I would love to have that telescope, but it's three times my budget. Well then, I would strongly recommend that you check out the SQA55, priced at just $795. It is being dubbed as the new successor to the immensely popular Red Cats 51. Based on other users' reviews that I've seen online, the SQA55 is not only cheaper than the Red Cat 51, but it's producing even better images. This telescope is simply a smaller model from the same range as the SQA85. I actually really like my red cat, so to see this opinion from so many other astrophotographers is really exciting to hear. If you'd like to check out the SQA85 telescope for yourself, then I've included a link to it in the description below, as well as a link for its smaller brother, the SQA55. The bottom line is, Sharpstar have released another beautiful little scope capable of capturing exceptional images. If you haven't seen my review on the Asgar 71F, which is $599, I'd highly recommend checking that out. I use the same camera as the one in this video, so the results themselves are somewhat comparable. Thanks for watching, and thank you to Sharpstar for sorting me out with this telescope. I have had to purchase it with my own money. I know we're only two weeks into 2025, but I have a very strong feeling that this right here is going to be one of my best purchases of the year. So subscribe to see how I get on with this telescope in the future. Thanks for watching, I'm Devin Scotting, and this was Astronomical.